Hello, internet. First of all, we are all going to just take a moment to admire the fact that I did an extensive amount of makeup, which is definitely not my norm, so let's... A little bit of a pause there. But really, the purpose of this video is I wanted to give you all a short and sweet introduction to all of the health conditions and injuries that I have been diagnosed with. And I want to make that clarification because I do have a lot of other symptoms that have not been diagnosed or have not been attributed to any specific condition or injury. And there is a lot of those, so I think it's a bit easier and simpler to deal with if we just focus on things that have been diagnosed and then on another video the things that haven't been, been diagnosed. And sorry about the lighting, at some point I will figure out how to do that better and maybe film at a different time of day that's not, you know, dark. But uh, yeah, let's jump into it. There are nine main conditions that I have been diagnosed with or injuries that I have been diagnosed with. And I'm going to go throughout, through them in chronological order as best as I can and as succinctly as I can. Big word. Just um, to give a really quick overview of um, what the conditions are, what the injuries are, and when I was diagnosed with them. I'll, I'll try and give like a real, real quick like what brought me to find the diagnosis in this video, but I don't want to get too in depth because we could be here all year. So let's jump into it. The, f excuse me, <laughs> the first condition that I was diagnosed with was hip dysplasia in Devel developmental hip dysplasia is a condition where the ball and socket joint of the hip does not properly form in babies and young children. It is sometimes called congenital hip dislocation or hip dysplasia. And I have this in both my right and my left hip. I was diagnosed when I was about 16 after I had a lot of excessive pain in my hips, especially when I would try to do sports, which not my thing. I digress. Number two, the second thing that I have been diagnosed with is chronic pain and other symptoms from a spinal compression injury and a severe concussion. Both of those injuries occurred during a car accident when I was 17 and it took actually about a year and a half for them to diagnose me with the spinal compression injury. The concussion was a bit more obvious on site. Um, but the spinal cord injury took a bit longer to diagnose because it was a bit it was a bit finicky. And basically spinal compression is caused by any condition that puts pressure on your spinal cord. Um, symptoms such as pain, numbness, or weakness in the arms, hands, legs, or feet can come on gradually or more suddenly depending on the cause. I also had some of these same symptoms in my face. Both sides of my face, though it was worse on the left side. A blow or jolt to the head. Can cause a concussion or a traumatic brain injury. The injury essentially keeps the brain from working normally. Symptoms of a concussion may last a day or they may linger for months or longer. And for me, um, because of the severity of my concussion and the fact that I was knocked unconscious for a little while, um, a lot of my post-concussion symptoms lasted for, again, quite some time and they lasted at least as long as that year and a half I mentioned that it took to diagnose the spinal compression and I would say even longer. Number three, the third wonderful thing that I've been diagnosed with is IBS, which stands for Irritable Bowel Syndrome. It's a common condition that affects the digestive tract. It causes symptoms like stomach cramps, bloating, diarrhea, and constipation. These tend to come and go over time and they can last for days, weeks, or months at a time. Yeah, mine is chronic, so it, yeah, it's kind of always there. And I was diagnosed with that when I was in my early 20s after I had a lot of various issues with constipation, acid reflux, and that kind of thing. So I was actually around the same time diagnosed with acid reflux disease as well as the IBS. So then number five, the on the list of things I've been diagnosed with is 
check this word out. Trimalleolar. Ankle fracture with syndesmotic injury, which basically just means I broke the shit out of my ankle. It was in November of 2015. It was actually on Friday the 13th. Um, and just to give you an idea of what that injury is specifically, tri means three. So a trimalleolar, trimalleolar fracture means that all three malleoli of the ankle are broken. So all three of the major bones in your ankle are broken. And syndesmotic injury is basically a dislocation of the syndesmosis joint, which is located between your tibia and fibia, which are the two major bones in your ankle and leg. I've had three surgeries to repair and to fix the issues I have with that, but I do still have some chronic pain, especially when it rains. Right, number six is all about allergies. So I've had severe seasonal allergies since I was a kid, as far back as I can remember. But those over the years have just started to get worse and worse, and what culminated, what, what ended up in me having um, what is now being called idiopathic anaphylaxis, which is a serious response that often involves swelling, hives, lowered blood pressure, and in severe cases, shock, which I've had. Um, the term idiopathic means without a cause. So in most cases, anaphylaxis is caused by an allergic reaction. So a specific trigger like peanuts is pretty common. So I have a reaction, but when I've done allergy testing to test things that I'm allergic to, we haven't been able to find out. So it's not like I have a peanut allergy or an allergy to shellfish or something like that. We just don't know what causes it yet. And that I was diagnosed with in 2012. That was when I had the first anaphylactic reaction. Um, and then I saw an allergist for over the course of the next couple of years to kind of figure it out. And so since we're still trying to figure out what causes the reactions, that's why they are still termed idiopathic. All right, number seven. This is the big daddy. This is the condition that has been causing me the most grief in my life lately and it's actually one that I'm waiting to have surgery on so it's it's a big deal this one is endometriosis the most simple definition of endometriosis is a condition where tissue similar to the lining of the womb starts to grow in other places, such as the ovaries and fallopian tubes. It's most common in your pelvic cavity, however, there have been cases of endometriosis being found in other parts of your body, such as the lungs on the diaphragm, and I think even more rarely in the brain. The tricky bit about endometriosis is you often don't know how bad it is, or even if you have it for sure, unless you have laparoscopic surgery which I have had, but it was done with a regular gynecologist instead of an endometriosis specialist. And to really get a proper diagnosis and proper treatment for endometriosis, you need to have a specialist. It's just necessary. So now I'm waiting for the surgery for a specialist who's going to be able to give me a better idea of where the endometriosis is and what they can do about it, if anything. Okay, number eight. Along with the endometriosis, and at the times when my endometriosis symptoms are the worst, so usually around the time of my period, or when I'm having other hormonal fluctuations, with increasing frequency I've been having issues with palpitations, dizziness, near fainting when standing, and during exercise, they've gotten to a point where it's, it's difficult to get out of bed most days, and so that sent me to a cardiologist who who figured out that there are no structural or rhythm problems with my heart, which is good, but I do have orthostatic tachycardia and orthostatic hypertension, or more specifically label hypertension. So essentially, orthostatic tachycardia refers to an increase in your heart rate upon standing, and orthostatic hypertension is 
an increase in your blood pressure upon standing. Label hypertension roughly means that your blood pressure fluctuates more than it's supposed to. So sometimes my blood pressure is too high, which is hypertension, and sometimes it is too low, which is hypotension. Because it's it's more common for people to have orthostatic hypotension, and mine is just a little wonky and likes to do both. And last, but not least, is carpal tunnel. That is the lucky number 10 of the conditions that I have been diagnosed with up to this time. And carpal tunnel is pressure on a nerve in your wrist. It causes tingling, numbness, and pain in your hands and fingers. Or what I like to call claw hands. And basically, I've had issues with numbness and tingling and pain in my hands because of the spinal compression injury I had that I mentioned earlier. However, in the last year or two, I've started to have different types of pain and tingling and sometimes the tips of my fingers would turn white and again, the sort of claw hands thing where if I did too much of the same sort of activity with my hands, one or both of them would just sort of freeze. That is basically the condensed, non-condensed version of my health issues, at least the ones that I have been diagnosed with. So to sum it up, pull up a full list again of all of the things that I have. Hip dysplasia, chronic pain from spinal compression injury and severe concussion, IBS, chronic pain from a trimalleolar ankle fracture with syndesmotic injury, severe seasonal allergies, slash idiopathic anaphylaxis, acid reflux disease, endometriosis, orthostatic tachycardia, and orthostatic hypertension, carpal tunnel syndrome, and that's it. Whew. Okay, so now you have a little bit better of an idea of the conditions that I deal with on a daily basis. In other videos, I will go more into depth on how I was diagnosed and how they actually affect me on a daily basis and just in general as a sick person. I'm going to go take a nap, y'all. See you later.